taunting Samson. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us! So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. Beating a bear with the dog. Samson is the freak in the freak show. But it's not a freak show, it's a festival. To show the superiority, supposedly of this pagan deity. Oh, they're enjoying it. He who spent his life painting disgrace on the Philistines has painted disgrace all over the face of his God. And it all goes to show, doesn't it, the importance of living your life faithfully so that you can finish it well because it is possible in the last five minutes to undo a lifetime's good work. At this point, Samson looks like he's messed it all up. But Samson is a God-made hero. God has made that man a hero. Scripture in Hebrews talks about the courage that's born of faith. We don't talk enough about courage. Let's do that for a minute. Courage is born of faith. Now we can all do the courage that well, I speak for myself, a number of us, I guess. Salute smartly and charge us up the hill in a moment of crisis. Yeah, we're up, yeah, we're up for that. I'm up for it. I'm up for any amount of that. I love that stuff. That's great. But Samson has got to be quite thoughtful and quite calculating in this situation. It's cold courage. He's not in the heat of the battle. He's not in the heat of the moment. He hasn't got a red donkey's jawbone in his hand. And he's not... You know, and the battle with Philistines thousands at a time. This is the courage that's born of faith that is thoughtful, cold, in that sense, but warm hearted towards God. Samson is a God made hero, and Samson hasn't been quite finished off yet. It's very important to realise that, isn't it? It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> And his last five minutes are going to be quite something. Because as you know very well from verses 25 to 31, Samson's next trip is to bring the house down. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple. More about those pillars in a minute. So that I may lean against them. He's not lying. He's not lying. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof, I'll show you the roof in a minute, were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. And then Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord. Ruler. One in charge. Capital letters for Lord. Covenant keeping God. God I can trust. Remember me. Remember me. Please God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines and my two eyes. And then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood in one minute. And pressed himself against them, his right hand on the one, left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. And thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. It doesn't tell us that to say about that. You and I are not called to that. Isn't that good? But he was. And then his brothers and his father's whole family went down again, and they brought him back, and they buried him between Zora and Eshtar on the tomb of Noah, his father. He gets... A good burial. He gets what a pious Jewish person would see as the approbation of God at the end of his life to be gathered to his fathers. He led Israel for 20 years. How many people led Israel for 20 years? There's a picture of some sort of redemption restoration going on here. 